Hello friends, I am Dr. Rajesh Chokhania, General Pediatrician from Bandra, Mumbai and today we will be discussing about clinical assessment of liver function. So we all know that the hepatocytes perform multiple functions and for the sake of simplicity we can group them into synthetic and metabolic functions. So synthetic dysfunction manifests clinically as edema due to hypoalbuminemia or bleeding due to hypoprothrombinemia. Metabolic dysfunction manifests clinically as jaundice due to hyperbilirubinemia and encephalopathy due to maybe hyperammonemia, hypoglycemia, etc. So when we talk of clinical assessment of liver function, essentially what we are trying to do is to answer some questions like is the liver function normal or abnormal and if abnormal, how severe is the affection? Is it acute or chronic, etc. We all know that individually, nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite are not specific to the liver and may have many other causes. But when they present in combination with jaundice, we know that this is a representation of acute hepatocyte dysfunction. So jaundice is the hallmark symptom and sign of acute hepatocyte dysfunction of course after having ruled out hemolysis as a cause of the jaundice and it signifies the extent of liver damage. The only exception is Rice syndrome where in spite of acute generalized hepatic dysfunction there is no jaundice and the patient may present with encephalopathy clinically. Of course Biochemically, we would be able to demonstrate hepatic abnormalities here, suggesting hepatic dysfunction. So coming back to hepatobiliary jaundice, it can be either primarily hepatic in origin or primarily biliary in origin. The patient looks sick when the jaundice is due to hepatocyte dysfunction and the patient looks relatively comfortable when the jaundice is primarily biliary in origin even when there is deep jaundice. Now as against jaundice in acute hepatocyte dysfunction, there may be no jaundice in chronic hepatocyte dysfunction. So this fact has two implications. The first is that we need to judge the presence or absence of chronic hepatocyte dysfunction by other symptoms and signs and not jaundice. And the second is that when we do see jaundice in a patient with chronic hip liver disease, it could mean one of two things. Either it could mean a temporary decompensation, which can be due to an intercurrent illness or an insult. For example, the patient may have had a recent bout of a large hematemesis, or it could mean the terminal stages of chronic liver disease. So we will have to correlate accordingly. Some uncommon symptoms or clinical manifestations of hepatocyte dysfunction include hypoglycemic manifestations or you know dyselectrolytemia manifesting clinically. Other clinical signs like gynecomastia and spider nevi are seen more commonly in adults, probably because it takes a long time after hepatic dysfunction for these clinical signs to manifest. So when we say that there may not be jaundice, then how do we clinically identify chronic hepatocyte dysfunction? We identify it by the presence of chronic subtle constitutional symptoms like poor appetite, poor energy level, poor activity level and in children growth failure where weight and height both are affected, but weight is affected more than height. In addition, we may find hematemesis and splenomegaly due to portal hypertension, edema of feet due to hypoproteinemia, and ascites, which is primarily due to hypoproteinemia, but the portal hypertension helps to localize the fluid to the peritoneal cavity. Rarely, we may see ascites even in acute severe hepatic dysfunction as is seen in acute fulminant hepatitis. 
other uh, detailed history will help us differentiate from other causes of such constitutional symptoms or growth failure and of course on examination when we find a firm hepatomegaly it narrows down the cause of these symptoms or presentations to chronic hepatocyte dysfunction. Similarly, hematomesis due to pre-sinusoidal portal hypertension can be differentiated by the fact that such patients will have isolated splenomegaly without hepatomegaly or ascites and in an otherwise healthy looking child. Coming to the edema and ascites, the history that the edema was first seen on the legs and then gradually progressive establishes the chronicity of the process and thereby helps us differentiate it from the sudden onset of periorbital puffiness followed by edema and ascites as seen in nephrotic syndrome. Now, how do we judge the severity of hepatic dysfunction? So, bleeding manifestations are another clinical sign of both acute and chronic hepatic dysfunction. But just the presence of bleeding manifestations does not indicate severity. In fact, in young infants, sometimes ecchymosis may be the first and the only clinical manifestation of hepatic dysfunction even when other obvious clinical signs like jaundice are not yet apparent though it can be demonstrated biochemically. This is because the liver performs multiple functions simultaneously and all functions may not be deranged equally and therefore one particular isolated manifestation may precede other clinical manifestations and other functions may apparently look normal clinically. So what denotes severity or seriousness of the illness is actually the failure of the bleeding tendency to correct even after administration of injection vitamin K. Of course, while interpreting bleeding as a sign of hepatic dysfunction, we must remind ourselves that hematomesis may occur due to bleeding varices due to portal hypertension, which is independent of the hepatic function or the cellular function at that point. And similarly, in a patient with cholestasis or biliary obstruction, Vitamin K being a fat soluble vitamin may be poorly absorbed and that may be the cause of hypoprothrombinemia and bleeding manifestations and not necessarily hepatic cellular dysfunction. And finally of course encephalopathy suggests hepatic failure that is severe dysfunction in both acute and chronic liver disease. In the relevant setting in infants, it may manifest just as inconsolable crying or it may manifest as a change in the sleep rhythm in older children and adults. Other clinical manifestations include a change in the handwriting, confusion, hyperreflexia and then maybe stupor and coma. So friends, we have discussed and revised that it is very much possible to evaluate liver function clinically by focusing and looking for signs and symptoms related to acute and chronic hepatic dysfunction and interpreting them contextually and we can also judge the severity of the dysfunction. Thank you. The next video will be by Dr. Kharay sir on clinical evaluation of renal function.